One. Hello, welcome to Unity Spiritual Center of Lansing. I'm Reverend Sharon Ketchum, and with me is Winnelly Zeeb. Hello, hi. Reverend Sharon. Good afternoon. Hello to all. Good time, whatever time it is. Yes, and hi to everybody that is joining us. We are together in this moment, wherever we are. What a wonderful mind bender that always is to know that we are together right now, all of us. I love it. Well, here at Unity, we have a mission to spiritually awaken to our oneness with God, with each other, and with all creation. And we hold a vision, seeing a world powerfully transformed through a growing movement of a shared spiritual awakening. And for this to work, it needs to be that shared spiritual awakening that, you know, God expresses in such infinite ways and to honor each other on our spiritual paths. Well, even though those paths may look very different, we know that really it is all is in harmony. So let's affirm together an ecumenical prayer. The enlightenment of the Buddhist shines within us. The compassion of the Christ shines through us. The power of Jehovah strengthens and guards us. The presence of Allah surrounds and guides us wherever we are. The Tao is, and all is God. Mm. And a little time for some self hugs. Right hand to the left shoulder, left hand to the right shoulder, and just close your eyes a moment and just envision your dear ones giving you all that love, all that connection, even as you're giving it back to them. As we breathe into that moment, really acknowledging our heart's need for self-care and our heart's need to connect one with another. We keep in practice of loving and compassion. <sighs> Yeah, today's got to be a tree hugging day too, I think. It's this beautiful weather out there and yes. just a little bit in the fall. And we are still a circle of support um, that unity is not closed. It's a reminder that we are open and functioning and doing everything. Uh, outside of our building, the offices on Michigan Avenue, there are copies of the Daily Word. Um, if you need one of those, you can just stop by and pick it up. So the God Bucket, what are we learning today, this week, about dismantling racism? Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's an ongoing journey. Yes. Do you want to pass me first? Sure. I think, yep, I put it in here. Ready? Okay. Got it? Yeah. You forgot to write it down. I don't see what it is. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's funny. I just... <laughs> It's agility. Agility. Mm. Wow. Okay. Tell me about that. Oh, one of the sensations that I actually teach in what I do in our art form called Nia of, of stopping and starting and really appreciating the now mm. with emotions. And as I was in my class with Milagros Phillips on Monday night, the shares, the listening, oh, to the journeys of others, mm -hmm. the compassionate listening and being present to it, feeling all the different emotions through me, and then coming back to center with the practice of feeling truth as well as celebrating and recognizing another's truth without being in it. Uh, compassion, love blanket, and also, wow, the journey of learning uh, this white journey that I've been on and the truth of others, um, tears and yet a love blanket. Yeah, I get that. The of emotions, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, I've gotten mine okay. down here. <laughs> <laughs> you got it? Yeah. Okay. Agility of reading what's there. <laughs> oh, personal. I, we've been I'm going through things with a bunch of different groups, but the other night as I, I was out walking the dogs, as I came up, this, this car drove by the side of our house and out of it, a tall uh, black man, young man, got out of the car and started walking back up our driveway, down our front door. And I could feel where my mind went. What is he doing here? Uh, is he one of the people that breaks into our cars during the night? Because <laughs> we have this thing in the neighborhood. And he um, was a friend of our son who was coming by to mow the lawn. But that my first thoughts would be there. I mean, that's 
I don't think of myself as racially biased, but obviously there is deep recordings in there and I don't want to have those thoughts. It's going to take some practice not to have that be my response. And I also realize how much I surround myself with white people. You know, how many times am I in a multicultural uh, experience where that is just normal? So, boy, there's such a difference between my head and my heart and my initial responses from those, those little biases that have been fed to us for years and that we've accepted. So. That awakened awareness, right? <sighs> yeah, it's not about them. It's about me. Yeah. <laughs> you know? it's not, those people out there doing the wrong things. It's the work I have to do. Sure. <sighs> so I guess we continue with the learning and the practices. On and on we go. <laughs> oh, so yeah, on and on. We got an election coming up in less than two weeks, <laughs> a week and a couple of days. So it's so important for us to bless this process. It's one of our greatest gifts to live in a democracy. And um, it is also stirring up a lot of wide range of emotions this year. So if we could all just hold that space for all of us, a shared spiritual awakening, you know, of compassion, knowing that there is only one power and presence, God the good, which is the essence of each of us and expressed in infinite ways. We bless the diversity of expression as we hold a safe space for a variety of opinions. We bless the sacredness of each vote, grateful we have the option of having a voice. We celebrate our politics of freedom, our offerings of kindness, and our universal race of humanity in our thoughts, words, and action. And let's just hold that true as we are going forward in this process. And of course, always we like to bless our neighbors we affirm that we know that God is a love that has no end and a power that knows no bounds. And as the fires continue out West as different struggles around this globe, whether it be with COVID or a variety of other things that are happening, we affirm that God's healing power of divine life is restoring, healing and revitalizing our world in this very moment. We let go of any fears or anxieties and we affirm that all are safe healthy and protected. We bless all those who support us in maintaining vibrant radiant health. We express divine life in all we think, say and do. We bless our global family with radiant health, peace of mind and abundant love. And so it is, amen. amen. And I'll turn it over to you with a daily word. Mm, love to share. Today's daily word is listen. Inspired by the words of Jesus in Luke, blessed, blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and obey it. During the course of a busy day, we may hear all kinds of things, conversations, music, sounds from nature, traffic noise, and even our constant self-talk. Sometimes all that I'm hearing may numb us to the more intentional act of listening. As we listen, we may become more aware of the voice of spirit. It's comforting, guiding presence, feels like a homecoming. As we settle into a tranquil environment, and begin to relax our bodies and mind, we create a welcoming space for listening to the assuring voice of spirit, discernible as our inner knowing. We breathe deeply and rest in this space. Hmm. We go about our day listening attentively for the voice of spirit, expressing through all people in our lives. Let us affirm together, in the quiet of my heart, I listen for the voice of spirit. What a beautiful image. Mm. Oh, yeah, I love that, love that. And 
as we listen, we know collectively we are unity here in Lansing. And that self-care, self-blessing, self-awakening is all part of the process that we affirm together for our communal um, group, open to deeper spiritual understanding. Unity Spiritual Center resolves and heals without struggle or strain. We handle our affairs and decisions with good judgment and positive, bold conviction. We are divinely guided to right action and innovative solutions in sacred synchronicity. Aligned with spirit, we are prospered and whole as a community and as individuals. And so it is. Amen. And you want to take us through our core value for this month? Absolutely. Happy to. Our core value this month is freedom. We, as we understand the nature of spirit to express and expand in infinite ways, we grasp the vastness of our own personal freedom. As we fully embody this truth, we are empowered to honor and protect the freedom of others. We celebrate the collective freedom of human, of humanity to be free of limiting thoughts and empower ourselves and others to fully express their potential. In this collective consciousness of freedom, we explore and express love, compassion, and harmony beyond any perceived personal limitations. This powerful potential of spirit within us right now is a right we claim for ourselves and for every living being. Let us affirm together, we champion each individual's freedom to become a full expression of spirit. Yes. And of course, our status, we continue till the end of 2020, not to meet um, in person, just virtual gatherings so that everybody can stay safe until we have a vaccine or treatment. Uh, but prayer circles going on classes and uh, of course our Sunday spiritual experience. Well, lots of other things all of a sudden seem to explode it this month. Uh, we are planning a kind of a goodbye ceremony to our building at Home Street. And I'm really gonna like to invite people to send me little recordings or pictures of maybe sharing a memory from Home Street or something you'd like to say to the building and we'll put them all together. And we'd like to play this um, during Thanksgiving week. So that, you know, just a reminder of all the things to be grateful for, the blessings that we have received. So if you need any help with recording, just get a hold of me at the church and we'll get on a Zoom call and do a, a recording. And uh, just really want to make this communal, even though we're physically separated uh, to celebrate. Um, zooming, yeah, zooming on lots of our reg regular things are going on, our Conversation Cafe Monday through Friday. Of course, In Love with Lucille on Monday afternoon. MAP, our meditation and prayer group, Wednesday night with Chris Jansen and Lisa Schmidt. Thursday, Course in Miracle with Carol and Dan Maynard. And to on Friday, oh, this will be passed by the time um, that the uh, yeah, it's Sunday when this goes out. Tangles every other week. It's kind of a meditation um, craft, if you will. It's just a fascinating thing. And um, it's October, so it's time to renew membership. Like I said, things are just happening all over, even though we're not meeting in person. Uh, renew membership. Um, forms went out to everybody in the mail who was a member this year. So was, yeah, fill it out and send it back in. So we keep that going. And the vote, if you haven't heard the vote of membership, uh, 75 of our members voted on releasing our home street property, 74 yes, one abstain, and to purchase the Washington Street property, 74 yes, and one abstain. So that uh, there, the results are quite clear. We are moving. And next week you get a gift. You're gonna be given an hour. What are you gonna do with it? Do you know what you're gonna do? Ah, uh, I hadn't even realized that was next week. <laughs> I'm in the moment. <laughs> yeah. Well, I want you to know you got a gift coming up. You got a whole extra hour to do with whatever you want. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> and then here's something you can do during that hour. I'm going to move us to the other <laughs> side. Uh, Lydia Skillman came with this great idea of a reverse pre-advent calendar. So every day during the month of November up to the 25th, 
there's a list of food items you could collect so that we can put these food gift bags together to help people have a Thanksgiving. So on our website, there's more details on, and on the Facebook page about suggestions for the food. Uh, and, and divide it into small quantities because a lot of people, if they're homeless or you know, living in a car or a van, they don't have room to store a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, so some great suggestions on that. So I, I hope people are moved to participate. Those that, you know, those of us that are still working and we've been blessed, we haven't been hit by the worst of it. I have no idea what people that were already food challenged, food insecure are going through during this pandemic. So this is something we can all do. We can do it collectively, uh, drop off of the fledge or any pantry that might be near you or the, the food banks. But anyway, great suggestion. Thank you, Linda, for doing this. And well, I'm yeah, I feel the enthusiasm growing within us. Something we can do to make a difference. Yeah. And with that, I'll move us back over. I'm going to turn this uh, over to you. You you have a quicker way now of... Um, stop I the do. Thanks Warm, to warming, warming up your band. <laughs> yeah. tuned to you. Okay. <laughs> Ooh. 
beautiful song. Oh, what a great reminder. No matter what's happening out there, we yeah, hold on to that vision. No oh. matter what. Oh, thank you, Winnelly, and thank you, Faith, for writing that insight. Yes, Faith. Yay. Yeah. God bless her. What a joy. If anybody's going to Hanu to Hawaii, yes, you can go find <laughs> Faith. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, we of course always offer our services in three parts. So you can binge watch them or watch them as it fits in with your schedule. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, and we look forward to seeing you for our next moments together. And yeah, just thank you for everybody who does support this ministry. And that's how you can support this financially with your prayers. You don't need an address, just hold us in your heart. God bless. Thank you. And